The mean value theorem guarantees the existence of a special point on the graph of y equals root x from x equals 0 to x equals 4. What are the coordinates of this point? We know that the mean value theorem does in fact guarantee the existence of a point because we can only use the mean value theorem when our function is differentiable everywhere on the interior from A to B. Here we're looking at the interior from 0 to 4. So we're not including 0 and we're not including 4. And it turns out that the square root of x is differentiable everywhere in that interior. So we can use the mean value theorem. And what the mean value theorem states is that the average rate of change from 0 to 4 is equal to the derivative at some number between 0 and 4. So first, let's find the average rate of change from 0 to 4. To do this, we just find the slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 gives us a slope of 1 half. Now, what the mean value theorem states is that there's some number c in between 0 and 4 such that the derivative at c is equal to one half. So we want to find at what x value the derivative is equal to one half. To do that we first have to find the derivative. Well the square root of x can be rewritten as x to the one half and the derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half which we can rewrite because x to the negative one half is 1 over the square root of x, so this is 1 over 2 root x. And we're going to set this equal to 1 half. We want to know for what x value the derivative is equal to 1 half. Well, this implies that x is equal to 1 once you solve this. 1, as it turns out, is in fact in between 0 and 4. So the mean value theorem worked out pretty nicely. Let's find our coordinate. The x value is 1. When you plug that into x, you get y is also equal to 1. And here is our point, 1 comma 1. Let f be the function given by f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared. What are all values of c that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem on the closed interval from 0 to 3. So we want to find all values of C such that the derivative is equal to the average rate of change from 0 to 3. To find the average rate of change from 0 to 3 we first need two points. We know the x values but now we need the y values. If you plug 0 into f of x, you get 0. And if you plug 3 in, 3 cubed is 27, minus 3 times 9 is 27. That's also 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Over 3 minus 0 is 3. So we're looking for all values in between 0 and 3 such that our derivative is equal to zero. In other words, we want to find all the points from zero to three that have a horizontal tangent line. So here we go. Let's find the derivative. f prime of x is equal to three x squared minus six x. Let's set this equal to zero because we want it to equal the average rate of change from zero to three. We can factor out a three x yielding x minus 2 and we have one at x equals 0 and another at x equals 2. Well 0 is not in between 0 and 3 so that one is out. We do have x equals 2 and so x equals 2 satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem. To give you a graphical representation of this I graph this equation in wolframalpha.com.
Now, let's find 0, comma, 0. 0, comma, 0 is the point right here. And let's also find 3, comma, 0. Here's 3, comma, 0. We can find the horizontal tangent line between 0 and 3. Now, there is a point between x equals 0 and x equals 3 such that the line is parallel, the tangent line is parallel to this secant line. And that occurs at x equals 2. So here's what we really did. We found the slope from 0 to 3 and found a point between 0 and 3 such that the derivative is the same. Find the average rate of change of g prime on the interval from negative 3 to 7. Does the mean value theorem applied on this interval guarantee a value of c in between negative 3 and 7 such that g double prime of c is equal to this average rate of change? Why or why not? We are asked to find the average rate of change of g prime from negative 3 to 7. The average rate of change is the slope of the line between these two points. Now, to find the slope of this line, all we have to do is do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 1 minus negative 4 is 5, and 7 minus negative 3 is 10. And so the average rate of change from negative 3 to 7 is 1 half. Now the next question is, does the mean value theorem guarantee a value of c, such that g double prime, or the derivative of g, is equal to this average rate of change? The answer is no. And the reason is because, in order to be able to invoke the mean value theorem, the interior from negative 3 to 7 must be differentiable. And there are three points at negative 1, at 1, and at 4, such that g prime is not differentiable. Because the interior from negative 3 to 7 is not differentiable, we are not able to invoke the mean value theorem.